Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's uh, Cichlids and Coffee live stream. I notice you folks have had a lively conversation going on, and uh, sometimes I peek to see what you have going on, <laughs> and uh, I like that you folks uh, always keep it always keep it friendly and uh, and helpful. Hello, Chevy Fish. Hello, Kristen. And uh, who else we got here? Tony. Hello, Tony. And T-Bone. Hey, T-Bone. Good to see you. And Kevin. Hello, Kevin Green, one of the moderators. I've said it before. I have the best uh, best YouTube moderators, uh, Kevin Green, and of course, Candy and GP and Denny when he can make it when he's not working on Saturdays, of course. So big shout out to those uh, wonderful moderators. Uh, Underground Info. Hello, Underground Info. And... Uh, Let's see here. Daniel's Aquatic Life. Hello, my friend. And Daniel Barrett. Hello, Daniel. Good to see you here. And uh, Mary Page Flynn. Hello, Mary Page. Doug M. And uh, get the word out. Let's let's get a whole bunch of people in here. Hey, Posiwi. Good to see you again. Glad you could make it. And uh, Let's see here. I said Tony, Chevy Fish. Hey, Chevy Fish. You folks had quite the conversation going on here. Hey, Blimpus. Time for discus and coffee. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. I was just doing some research on, uh, on water conditions uh, in the Nashville area and how conducive they are to, uh, to discus. And I'll get more into that in a second because... Uh, some surveys that I conducted at the uh, over at the community page, the YouTube community page allows you to do surveys, and I did some surveys. And interestingly enough, as you'll see in a minute, we got some some uh, results that were a little bit surprising. Uh, fish and floral, hello, fish and floral, and hello, Neil. Good to see you back, Neil. And uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Or Baglio, hello, friend. And Sean Simons and Tony V and Flowerhorn and Tom over in one of my favorite places in the world, Malibu, California. I'm going to miss Malibu, Tom. And uh, Cal Jackson. Hello, Cal. Frank Ficalora. Ficalora. I'm moving from Michigan to Maine. And uh, let me see here. I got to get past this. I mean, and have to sell my tanks, too. Yeah, I'm telling you, uh, uh, it's been quite quite an adventure. And uh, some people told me, watch out for Craigslist, uh, a lot of scams and what have you. And the people I have met uh, have been just absolutely uh, uh, wonderful. And uh, so, I mean, certainly, like with anything, you have to, you know, you, you, you have to be alert. But the people that I have come across that have come over and picked up fish and uh, committed to tanks and things like that have all been very, very, uh, very, very friendly. Uh, the title of the tank, of, of course, today's, uh, uh, today's live stream, I sold every tank and every fish and, and yet you see a tank behind me. So right off the bat, you're thinking, wait a minute, what's going on? Uh, this tank sold two weeks ago. And, um, but I asked if, if it could be, you know, I asked a fellow named, uh, named Derek, if he could please leave it for a few weeks. Uh, because I needed to sell fish and I needed a place for them to go. The, um, the 29 gallon, the quarantine tank is gone. Of course, the 150, you know, that's gone from my last video. And, uh, and of course, Kevin Green, uh, which I'll be talking about in a video uh, that I'm releasing, uh, re uh, took, the, uh, took the 60 gallon along with uh, Photoshop and all the fish that were in there. So, um, at any rate, uh, it's going to be an, an interesting adventure, and uh, let's go ahead and get into a few points here. Hey, we're almost at 100. It shows here we're at 98, 98 people. That's good, and let's uh, let's keep it going. Let's 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 start. Let's officially start this live stream. What do you say? If you're new to the channel and you always want to be learning, that's the 
theme, the motto of the channel, always be learning. And there's kind of a sub-theme, which is uh, uh, we all learn from each other, which is true. You know, I've learned so much from you folks, and, uh, and I, I can't begin to explain how much I've actually learned from the comments you folks make. So we really do learn from each other. And uh, so, uh, but if you like learning, uh, be sure to hit that, that sub button and the bell and all that good stuff. Um, yes, there's going to be a time period here where I'm going to be without tanks and fish. And so you're probably wondering, well, what the heck is he going to show us or talk to us about? But I have a tremendous library of material. And I'm going to be uh, doing a sort of a vlog uh, series of getting across the country and getting set up. So uh, the first in that series is going to be released within a couple of weeks. And uh, so anyway, hit that bell if you haven't already. Hit that sub button. And uh, let's get right into it here and talk a little bit about what, uh, what's been going on. And of course, I released the video. It's gone, and it got a, a pretty, pretty big response. And uh, all I, all I have left there is that is that water stain on the, uh, on the wood floor there, which I'm in the middle of working on getting rid of. If you have any advice or tips on how to get uh, water stains out of wood, let me know. Uh, a bit of advice: if you have a tank on a wood floor, uh, put it on a rubber mat or have the stand uh, set up so it only makes contact in a couple places. Uh, my stand was kind of a flat bottom stand and as a result, water would get trapped. And unless you emptied the whole thing and moved the whole thing, you really couldn't dry under it. So um, I think a rubber mat under a tank, is a, especially if you're on wood, is a good idea. And um, I thought I was pretty safe because I had that whole bottom that whole closed up bottom, I thought that I was pretty safe. But uh, when I was experimenting and dialing in and learning about sumps, I did have some water that spilled over. And when you have an aquarium, water gets gets on the floor. I mean, that's a given. So if a rubber mat is, a, is there sealing off part of it, you'll still get some moisture around the edges and you might end up with a water line around where the tank was. So maybe all things considered, the best advice I could give you is to have a stand that is, is perhaps on, on some type of feet that then can allow air to circulate and allow you to get towels under it in the event that you do have a spill if you have a hardwood floor. Uh, so I'm working on that, and that video got a pretty good response. It's over 5,000 views, and uh, uh, people, uh, for some reason, respond to things like that. You know, it's gone. Uh, he's dead. Uh, they're all dead. They, 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 they uh, you know, what happened? You know, um, people respond to these kinds of, of uh, thumbnails, and uh, that that video certainly got a response. And it was a uh, a bit of a sad moment for me to let that tank go, having having evolved it and learned all about sumps with that tank. It's sort of like you know, you never forget your first, you never forget your first sump. <laughs> so. Uh, I, uh, it'll always be sort of dear to me, and the family that has it sent me uh, uh, some pictures, that sent me an email, and uh, some communication telling me how much, uh, how much they're enjoying it. When you buy an established tank from somebody locally, and that tank is healthy, and and uh, you can take you can take that tank, take the substrate, put it in buckets, uh, grab grab up the filters, make sure they stay moist, get them home and fill it up with conditioned temperature matched water and just drop the fish in. You, you've got an instantly cycled situation. So all the tanks that I've sold are, you know, went, went immediately into operation and people sent me videos and, uh, and it's just been marvelous watching how, how wonderful they, they, they've, they've been able to get things up and running. And folks that, that bought fish have sent me videos of the fish that they purchased and how well they're doing in their tanks and so I thank those of you, if some of you are on this stream and have done that, thank you so much. It, it has really, uh, it's like following up on your kids, you know, after they've moved away or left for college, right? You're sort of, they send you some video and you go, oh good, you know, they're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's been an experience. Um, I did a little, a little um, reminiscing, a little soul searching and uh, a little, you know, just looking back and, um, and, I, and, I, and I spotted, uh, 
over the years, what was the most stable tank setup? And all my tanks went through their own sort of, you know, sort of evolution, sort of, you know, tweaking and adding this and taking that out. And, and in, in the five to six years that however long I've been posting to YouTube, uh, there, was, there was a tank that overall was the most stable. And um, and so I'm not I'm not a I didn't do a scientific investigation into it, but um, all I can do is share with you, which I do in in the video tips for a stable aquarium, which is coming up. All I can do is share with you the component parts of that of that particular tank, and why, uh, you know, why I think it was the most stable. And um, I mean stable to the point where it actually was completely unaffected by things that were ravaging the other tanks, uh, such as Colomeris, things like that. And so um, I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going I'm to share with you every component part, uh, what was in there, what was in the filters, what was the filter combination, uh, you know, the stocking levels, everything that, that led to what over the years turned out to be the most stable tank of all of them. I'm also uh, looking at things that are probably going to be in my future. And uh, when you set up new tanks, of course, things like algae blooms are uh, something that, that can occur. Some of you out there that are watching right now might have a, a, a tank that's, you know, six months old or, or newer or maybe you know under a year and you're still getting these algae blooms that are bugging the heck out of you and sometimes that algae looks a little bit red or a little bit purple and uh, the fish don't eat it and it's just getting over everything it's getting on your decor it's it's of course on your glass and it's just driving you crazy uh, what you're running into is a very common situation that is actually actually diatoms as opposed to algae it's called brown algae they refer to it as brown algae some people call it red algae and blue algae but diatoms and uh, these diatoms are nasty they're very common when you're first setting up for a variety of reasons um, and um, and the traditional handling for um, for algae in some cases actually promotes more diatome growth so um, I cover this in uh, the yuck video that you see there. There's a yuck brown algae in your fish tank. And just, just sort of doing my own uh, research in advance uh, to be ready for the kind of things that I haven't had to think about because all of my, ta all of my tanks were so uh, very, very well established that there were things that I didn't really have to think about anymore. Uh, the kind of cloudiness you get and uh, when you get a new tank set up. And uh, I got a, uh, an email the other day from somebody that said it, you know, it's been several months and they still can't get rid of the cloudiness. You know, you have, uh, by the way, are you drinking out of one of these? You should be. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, the, um, if, you got, if you have some cloudiness, you know, the first steps I would take would be uh, natural ones. And uh, those would include things like adding floss to my filter, pinky floss, or maybe some uh, crib untreated. And by untreated, what I mean, it it's, doesn't have heat resistant or uh, fire retardant or something. There has no chemical in it. It's just plain white, um, just white bedding. And I think I have some of it at my Amazon store the amazon.com slash shop slash Benno chart. You can go there. You can put floss in there, uh, crib batting. You can put pinky floss. That would be my first approach. Now, if that doesn't work and, you're still, and you still have that cloudiness, uh, consider uh, products like Pristine, or I'm sorry, not Pristine, but uh, Clarity, Seachem Clarity. What Seachem Clarity does is it bonds... Right when you first put it in, your tank gets cloudier than it was before. And you go, oh man, this stuff isn't working. This is making it worse. But that means it's working. And what it does is it, is it binds 
it binds to, to the particles so that they're now big enough so that your filter can capture them. So clarity is an idea uh, that you can use. And um, so there's, you know, there's things out there. I, I, I had great luck with, um, with Pyrogen. Pyrogen does a great job of, of, uh, of clearing up the water. And uh, Boyd, uh, Chemipure, and if you have plants, Chemipure Green. So there's different, uh, you know, Chemipure Blue and Chemipure uh, Green are the two options. So um, those are all at the Amazon store. And for those of you who, who um, have asked about ways to support the channel, the Amazon store is a great way to do that. Um, I also released a, a video on uh, removing fish from quarantine, the kind of things that I look for before I'll remove a fish from quarantine. And um, some of you out there say, I don't quarantine, I never have quarantined. And I get it. And it's one of those things where it works for you to not quarantine until it doesn't. And then when it doesn't, you know, hopefully it's not something devastating. Uh, like in my case, where I hurried up a quarantine and it cost me 50% of my stock. So um, I talk about from here to there is a video on uh, moving fish from quarantine to your main tank. And it got a, you know, it, it, it got an okay response. The, the uh, thumbnail was a little bit, not quite perhaps as clear or as impactful as it could have been but um it eventually picked up some steam i think it's about 1500 views or something which is man eh, it's okay you know it's not great but it's okay and uh i did a survey i did a couple surveys and um and i i, I want you to know that i'm not going to be doing a uh, gofundme <laughs> The survey, the GoFundMe survey was, uh, uh, six, it was 64 to 36 against. So uh, no GoFundMe. You have to worry about that. And uh, and I get it. You know, GoFundMe, somebody's spouse is fighting uh, cancer. Somebody's ill. Someone's had a bad accident. Um, someone made a case for that's more of what you would use GoFundMe for. Uh, someone else said, hey, look, go ahead and do it. If they don't want to give, they don't give. I mean, so it's up to them as long as they know up front what you're using the money for. So there were there were people making different cases on different sides of it, but probably the one that struck the chord with me was that somebody said that, uh, hey, look, you know, in, in the world that we're currently in um, with what's going on, maybe we should reserve things like GoFundMe for actual you know, serious life threatening type of, of, of circumstances. And I, and that struck a chord with me. So, um, if anyone wants to, um, if anybody wants to support the channel, uh, and, and help with the move and things like that, uh, you, you, you can just use these, these sort of traditional methods that I've offered the, you know, you, you, you can, uh, go to my Teespring store, down here and and pick up some t-shirts and some coffee mugs and things like that if you want to support the channel and be sure to use live stream for a 10 percent discount and of course uh you can go to the amazon store the, the funny thing about amazon is if you if you use my link to get to amazon and you buy fish or live streaming products from my store and uh, uh I, I get a credit but if you go anywhere on amazon and buy ink cartridges or buy paper or buy clothing or anything. If you got there with my link, it supports the channel and it doesn't raise your price at all. So we'll just stick with traditional uh, ways of supporting the channel. Of course, Super Chats and you watching the videos. Those are the best ways. Uh, of course, you watching the video, you being here, that's that's support. That's supporting the channel. So we'll stick with these, uh, you know, we'll stick with these uh, traditional uh, funding methods and we'll skip we'll skip uh, GoFundMe the other survey was interesting um, I, I would think based on on the the folks that I interact with and you know the name you know, the, the emphasis of the channel that uh, African cichlids would have been far and away the leader in what fish folks are hoping that I include in my in my upcoming fish room and surprisingly, the uh, what what ended up 
being number one is discus. So um, that's why I was doing some research on discus and, um, and how to actually set up a discus tank in the water conditions that exist in the Nashville area because uh, I love discus. I, I didn't need much encouragement uh, to convince me to get into discus and it looks like that's, uh, that's where I'm going, which is why it was kind of funny when I first came on and one of you said, uh, Ben, oh, discus. So <laughs> now, uh, that being said, we have a, uh, a tie for second and a very close tie, uh, a, a, a very close uh, to, you know, set first and second are separated by not that much. And uh, the, uh, for African uh, cichlids and also South American. So, which is, which is interesting because if those of you who've been following my channel, you know that I, that I recently fell in love with a green tear and a green tear, um, which I guess is a South American and uh, South American single, beautiful fish. The, uh, the type of green tear that has that orange yellow rim at the, uh, on the tail, uh, just to me is just a, a, a gorgeous, just a gorgeous fish. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a green tear. I also love Jack Dempsey's, and um, so it's going to be a uh, an interesting an interesting situation. But I'm pretty sure you're, you're you're I can pretty much guarantee you, green tear, discus, African cichlids go goes without saying, and uh, some type of a planted situation, and and some geophagus. Uh, geophagus came out about 14 percent. Kind of a unique fish. Uh, I understand that probably many folks, when they did the survey, maybe didn't even know what a geophagus is. So I get it. I get it. So at any rate, I have something else in store for you folks. And I think you're going to like this a lot. I spent uh, two hours in a recorded Zoom interview with uh, Hurry Fisher, and uh, his name is Hurry, it, it's like Murray, but with a Hurry, Hurry Fisher in Canada. He's up in Canada, and he is the owner of Piscine Energetics. And I, I, got, I got some insight on fish food that is going to blow your mind. It, it's, it was like a fish food fish feeding, fish nutrition masterclass. And if you, if you are like me, if you're interested in providing um, like the most efficient, most cost-effective, um, most effective nutrition, I mean, you're going to love this. You're going to love this discussion. Two hours. I mean, it, it gives me some background. Uh, some background on him and how he arrived at where he arrived at. And then he gets into the whole Mises, the whole Mises story. And uh, it's just fascinating. And, and, and then he gets into some details about what feeding certain kinds of nutrition to our fish, what impact it can have on the fish. And I have two hours of content that I'm trying to distill down and edit to give it to you in, in, in the most efficient uh, uh, manner that doesn't use up too much of your time but drives home, doesn't water down the message because just about everything he said was just so, uh, so interesting from his background in his, you know, in his childhood, you know, the path that led him to ultimately being the president and owner of Piscine Energetics. So uh, I'm working on that project. And so uh, if you're thinking about leaving the channel temporarily until I set up the fish room, don't. I've got some great content for you. I'm almost thinking, I'm almost thinking of um, connecting up with a number of um, influential or uh, very respected people in the industry and doing these kinds of Zoom interviews, uh, like a sort of almost like a masterclass series, just packed, packed rich with, with uh, information from people that you would respect and uh, that have experience. And so um, if you like that idea, let me know in the, in the chat and uh, 
we, we can, uh, I can pursue it more. I, I'd have to reach out to these folks and get them to agree. I did, I did something like that um, with Pongaroo. A lot of you respect Pongaroo. I mean, uh, some of you like or don't like his product. I get it, but I mean, the man definitely has experience and knowledge, and uh, I certainly like him a lot. And uh, but and I, and I had one time I had Corey in one of my videos, uh, very respected individual, tremendous amount of education under his belt. So um, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about a, like a little masterclass series, and it's a lot of work because uh, you get all of this. You don't want to cut them off. You want them to talk, and so you you get all of this recorded content, and then you got to spend all the all the time editing and adding some graphics and things of this nature. And uh, anyway, a lot of fun. Stay tuned for that. The Piscine. Uh, the Piscine video or videos, I might put it out in three parts. So let's talk a little bit about uh, today's topic and uh, and why do I have a picture of a fish? Because I'll sneak around the corner here. Um, today's topic uh, has to do with why in the world would somebody uh, give up, you know, give up the fish, give up the tanks, and, uh, you know, be willing to let go of such a well-established, uh, you know, such, such a well-established uh, collection of fish and tanks and things like that. And, uh, and the reasons are, are pretty straightforward. I mean, the, the reasons have more to do with... Uh, cost, uh, stress on the fish, and, uh, you know, the thought of moving these fish over 2,000 miles and uh, around 2,000 miles, the thought of, of uh, uh, having to transport, and, uh, and I really felt like I was at a point in my, in my fish keeping career or experience, I felt like I was at a point where it was time to to sort of expand out a little bit and uh, add a little bit of variety. And I know I'm kind of known as the cichlid guy, and uh, but I thought maybe it's time to to add add a few different elements to what I do. And um, the fish that you're seeing here are are some of my favorites. You're going to be seeing a video on the fish I'm going to be missing the most. I've got that video in the queue and it's going to be released in a few weeks and you're seeing some of those fish now. Um, some of them are, are, were just spectacular and it was such a, such a joy to, to, to acquire them and also to, uh, to watch them bloom and, and just be spectacular. And so, um, but when, when you look at the cost, which is often tied to weight, when you look at the wear and tear that would occur on on aquariums, you know, being trucked that far, and uh, all things considered, I had to make the tough the tough choice of uh, of of just starting over. At one point, I had I had reconciled. Uh, okay, I'm going to take the 150. I love the 150. I've got that sump dialed in. It's a great size. Um, I had sort of decided to keep it, and then somebody showed up, and I just happened to show it to them, and and they just instantly fell in love with it and um, pulled out some cash, and, and it was like, okay, all right, I guess I'm gonna have to start over, and uh, so it, it wasn't easy. Uh, anyone who tells you that, I, I guess there's people out there that are very dispassionate, they're, they're very flippant about it, and it's like, bah, you know just fish you know I've had people comment under my videos ah just a fish you know fish dies so what you know um, it, it wasn't like that it was actually uh, a bit uh, it was funny when when people would load up the stuff and drive away I would uh, there was this little bit of a hollow or empty sort of a numb feeling uh, immediately afterwards and uh, and then I would I would start to sort of come back and uh, start putting my attention on on what's ahead, on what's ahead of me. 
And that's where I have to have my attention. I can't be uh, thinking about these beautiful fish too much. I mean, I've got one of the nice things about YouTube, and one of the reasons I tell you, I, you know, I encourage you to to upload to YouTube is is that they will provide for you a archive, an archive record at no charge. And so I can go back and re-experience and enjoy these fish and these tanks uh, forever. And so can you. And, um, but at any rate, it was a little, it was difficult. It was hard. And, uh, but now my attention is on getting there and figuring out what I'm going to do and figuring out how to set up a tank that will be uh, pristine enough to support discus and also how to uh, introduce South American cichlids along with the African cichlids that no doubt I'm going to be having. Uh, there's a place out there called Critters I'm going to be visiting and any other advice you can give me on on places in the uh, in the Nashville area that you think uh, have a nice selection of fish. And of course I'll continue to use the reliable sources that I've used over the years that have provided me with, with great fish, right? Um, Life Fish Direct, Cunningham, uh, The Wonder of Cichlids, uh, The Cichlid Shack, uh, people like that will continue to be a, uh, a trusted uh, source for me in buying fish. So um, I, I show 176 people, that is awesome. Thank you so much everybody for jumping in. I think I'm, I missed some super chats. Let me let me back up here and see who I missed. And once I get going, once I start babbling, I just, uh, I don't want to look at the chat because I'll get distracted. And um, someone says Beantown. I might be checking out Beantown. Beantown is, uh, looks, looks legit to me. And Francie, hey Francie, thank you. I appreciate that. Coffee money. I like the little uh, little cartoon you attach there. And uh, hey, Candy. KG. Hey, KG, thank you. Gas money. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I appreciate that, Kevin. And Richard comes in with five. Thank you, Richard. And uh, Aqua, Aqua Door Deep. Thank you, Aqua Door Deep. Thank you so much for that. And Paul McCartney. Thank you, Paul for the moving fund. And Marty, thank you, Marty. Greetings to you, my friend. And uh, I can't guarantee I'll use that 499 for, that particular 499 for a discus, but I'll think about you when I buy a discus. <laughs> so, um, if you've had to sell uh, tanks, if you had to uh, tear everything down and, and start over, uh, share your experiences in the in the comments. I'd like to hear how it went for you and what was your, um, you know, how you went about it, what kind of feelings and thoughts you might have had during the situation. Um, we'll do a, uh, a, a selling everything support group. <laughs> All right. And uh, interestingly enough, I still have, I have not sold Vinny. I would have thought, and I've got a video coming out on this, but I would have thought that Vinny would have been one of the first fish to go. Vinny, my 10 inch uh, Venusis. And uh, you know, Nimba, uh, the, the uh, Nimbochromus have a little bit of a bad rap. Uh, I think people see the word Venusis and they panic. Uh, this fish, and uh, you can see him still behind me here and uh, this fish is is a mellow guy. I mean, you can see him just hanging there in the middle of the tank. Hey, Vinny. This this guy is way more way way more aggressive than Vinny. Vinny's the boss. the The fire half wouldn't wouldn't mess uh, with Vinny, but um, Vinny's just this big lumbering giant, you know, and. Um, I, I think if, if, if nobody picks him up, I'm, I'm positive Nolan over at Nolan's Aquarium down in Santa Ana, California. If you're in Southern California, check him out. He's got a great, great fish selection down there. And I'm pretty sure Nolan will pick him up and uh, maybe he'll breed him. And maybe at some point he'll send me some of Vinny's fry 
and uh, because he's a great he's a great fish. He's just a great fish, and uh, just a beautiful, big beast. And he knows I'm talking about him. So uh, that that was kind of a surprise that that uh, that that he that he's still available, and uh, and also I'm kind of surprised at the fire hap that the fire hap is still available because he's a he's a gorgeous uh, he's a gorgeous fish, pushing probably eight inches. Where is he? Back here in the corner, pushing about eight inches, and uh, here he comes. And just an absolutely gorgeous fish from Life Fish Direct, and uh, and I think uh, someone's coming over this afternoon, and he's going to pick up the fire hap, and he's going to pick up the um, the dragon blood. I have that albino looking. He's not an albino, but he looks a lot like an albino. Very light pink, almost dragon blood, and maybe some of the living stone. I have a a, a male. A guaranteed male that that colored down after he was moved to the 150 and he never colored back up again this guy here he's just a beast he's a beautiful fish so he might pick him up too so I might have uh, three or four of those fish gone by the end of the day and then I think Nolan's gonna come over and check out the rest so um, it's getting close it's getting close and uh, I wanted to film in front of this tank one more time and uh, you'll see some more videos even though I, I have no tanks, I have more content filmed with the tanks. So you'll be seeing more of these tanks over the next month. And, uh, and then eventually, of course, you're not going to see them. A except when I pull content from prior videos. And uh, I might do that in talking about certain fish. I might, I might pull content from, from uh, po po prior videos, which I guess is allowed. Hey, it looks like we're at 185. Wow, is that the highest? Candy, do you know? Is that the highest we've ever had on at one time? 185? That's great. You know? So, uh, I always knew that if I hung in there, even though originally I was broadcasting upside down, and uh, the broadcast would be abruptly uh, crash in the middle of it, I knew that if we hung in there, we would get a following... <laughs> And for those of you who have been with me from the beginning, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so Laura, thank you, Laura, four ninety nine. I appreciate that. The uh, super chats are are catching catching some steam here, and I appreciate that. Thank you for the help, Laura. Laura Sutton, and um, let's let's see what you folks have to say here. I want to look at the chat very closely and see if there's some questions that jump out. So I'm going to scroll back and uh, let's see here. Well, underground info. Um, first of all, I'm a little bit concerned about your combination of fish. I think, um, I don't know, maybe if they were raised from very small until adult and you, they don't get into um, any kind of breeding, maybe you're okay. But there's an Oscar, uh, Severums, Green Tear, and a Jack Dempsey. Um, it, would, it would seem that that could lead to trouble, but maybe not. I mean, when I told people that I was putting Living Stone Eye and Venusas together, uh, they, they told me I was insane. So uh, maybe not. Uh, but, but at any rate, your concern is about all of the wires and, and hoses and, and uh, things of that nature, uh, pipes that you have going on with uh, the combination of filtration. You have an HOB, you have a hang on back filter, you have a Penplax canister, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to get stuff out of your tank, if you want to get stuff out of your tank, uh, go with a sump. And if you don't want to drill your tank, you can use what are called overflow boxes. Now, I have heard some problems on overflow bo boxes when the, when the uh, siphon breaks, you can get over flooding, you know, flooding of the box. Uh, but now they have safeguards for that. So uh, do a little research on overflow boxes, or maybe you have a tank, uh, as long as it's not tempered glass, uh, you can drill it. If it's acrylic like this one, it's pretty easy to drill. 
uh, easy. I haven't done it, but it looks easy on, on videos. But uh, definitely uh, do a lot of research on that. But I would say a sump is the best way to rid your tank of all of that stuff. Certainly a black background and then black heaters, black pipes. Uh, that sort of disguises it. I've got pipes and sponges and stuff in this tank, but they're all black. And so that helps. But uh, you want to hide equipment. There's no better thing to do it with than a sump. Or the very clever placement of uh, decor. All right. Daniel's Aquatic Life. Uh, just first set of cichlids, seven kinds of uh, mabuna. Good luck, Daniel. Be sure you create a lot of caves. Uh, one of the smartest things I ever heard was a person that built caves uh, vertically. He created uh, vertical caves. So uh, you take the real estate now and you multiply it because you're working up. And so the caves don't have to be just along the bottom. Build them up and they'll claim different caves at different levels. And so you'll get a lot more use out of your tank. Very different than if you had, let's say, open water fish. Let's say you had some uh, Malawi trouts or some uh, Bucachromus nodotania. They, they like the open water. So you, you take that rock work that, and keep it very low so they have open water. With Mabuna, you want to build that up and give them a lot of spots they can go in and, you know, just kind of peek their head out. It's very cute when they do that, and uh, you'll enjoy the heck out of it. On the rocks that are low, they'll dig, and they'll open up the area more and more and more. Keep an eye on that because they can create a cave-in. They can move so much that you can have a, a bit of a cave-in, which is why I like artificial rocks because they weigh nothing, and if they fall over, they don't even scar your, 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 your tank. Uh, like the kind you get from uh, Universal Rocks. They don't sponsor me. Uh, I just, from experience, the Universal Rocks I had that were very lightweight, I thought were good. Um, let's see what else we got in the chat here. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And um, T-Bone, Ben, I'd just like to say thank you for getting me into the hobby. You were the first live stream and first video I saw on YouTube about fish. After I saw your fish, I knew I had to get into the hobby. Thank you, T-Bone. I love hearing stuff like that. I really do. You know, one of my uh, passions, one of my um, goals uh, is education and encouraging um, people to come into the hobby. This is why I'm so adamant and I jump really hard on people that that troll or attack people who act, who, who ask, you know, like stupid questions. Uh, I don't think there's a stupid question when, when you realize that people are brand new and getting into the hobby. Uh, you have to answer and, and be patient and work with these folks because they are the future of the hobby. And so um, when I hear someone saying that they got into the hobby or were encouraged to jump in deeper into the hobby because of something of mine that really, really excites me. I really love hearing that because it hits right where I live, right right where it's what I'm trying to do. So thank you for that. Very appreciated, my friend. And um, let's see what else is cooking in the chat. And thank you for getting up so early, T-Bone. I appreciate that. 2 to 4 a.m., my God, that's awesome. Chevy Fish watching the chat on a small screen. Yeah, that would be that would be a little hard, but I appreciate you guys that watch it on a telephone. I think a lot of social media is moving more and more in the direction of mobile devices, and so um, that's why phones, I think, are getting a little bit bigger and bigger. Let's see here. Kristen getting ready to do some water changes and listening to Ben. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate you having me as your background music. <laughs> Okay, let's see. GP is going to be doing Dr. Novak's anoxic filter today. GP, I'd like to, you know, GP, why don't, you know, we you, we talked a little bit about this on email. Well, why don't you videotape doing that and send me the video and then we can share it with everybody on how to make these, these inexpensive uh, uh, filters that apparently are very, very effective in controlling, uh, you know, ammonia and nitrates and things of this nature, uh, take, you know, just set up a camera on a tripod or, you know, on a steady stand, just go through it and then send me the footage and I'll go ahead and edit it and, and, uh, 
It could be an interesting collaboration. Let's see what else we got here. If you have a question, ask it, and I will be getting to the end of the chat and be able to pick it up. OF, I am tired. I think you're ti tired of African cichlids. Going to the goldfish, they do not kill each other. So, um, peace in my tank. Good afternoon, Ben. You know, you're not the first person, OF, that said that. Um, I remember um, is it my wet pets over in uh, Massachusetts had a beautiful, giant cichlid tank. And then one day I checked in, he had a big planted community tank. He just got rid of all of them. And um, he just said he got tired of the antagonism, you know, the, the, the uh, violence. And so I hear you. I hear you. And, and because of that, uh, people move out of the hobby. It, it's, uh, you know, I even have a video. And Candy, you, you don't have to search for this video if you don't want to. But, but there was a video I released for a while where I just came right out and said that African cichlids might not be for you. Because it takes a, a certain kind of temperament, they're, they're aggressive, they're, they're violent, they sometimes kill each other uh, or, or severely damage each other, where they'll beat another fish to, the pulp, to, to a pulp, and you'll go out to dinner, and they are all doing fine, and you come back from dinner, and one of your fish has half his tail missing, and uh, you know one of his eyes is damaged, and... and uh, they have these little triggers in their teeny little minds, in their teeny little fish brains, and something flips a switch, and they're off to the races. So you, it's, it's a type of fish that you have to be very observant. I think ideally, if you keep cichlids, you need to have several tanks at the ready. You need to have... Um, always have a tank that you can throw a fish in if you have to, either a fish that's been beaten up or a fish that's gone, uh, you know, batshit crazy. You got to have a tank that you can throw that fish in, so the fish can chill and calm down. Uh, you you should have a fish that allows you to graduate fish as, as they put on size and 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 bulk, that you can graduate up. That was an ideal combination for me to have fish that could go from uh, the the quarantine tank to the sixty to the one hundred and then to the one fifty. It was like an ideal lineup. Uh, because, and if they didn't work out at the 150, I could bring them back to the 100, like I had to do with that Fusco. I mean, the, here's this big, goofy Fusco who just couldn't, couldn't take it. And he was, he's a big fish, a notoriously dangerous fish. These Fuscos are known to be antagonist. And he was just a big goofball. Uh, somebody bought him. They got a great Fusco. They could put him with, with probably anybody and he'd be okay. He's just, he was just a big goofball. Um, so, yeah, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, you can make a case for African cichlids not being for everybody. And you know what? That's cool. That's totally cool. I think uh, there's something beautiful about a planted guppy tank. I've never had a problem, uh, L, I think it's like L.I. Baker. Have you ever had problems with bumblebee? cichlids being I guess it's, it says bring but being aggressive because mine are crazy attacking a Jack Dempsey well first of all I, I, I don't know if I'd recommend a Jack Dempsey and a bumblebee being in the same tank number one um, you're, you're playing with fire there number two um, and, and they're anyway uh, number two a bumblebee it to me is a lot like an erratus and those fish, I just think, are crazy. I just think they're nuts. Now, if you have one and he's and you love him and he's peaceful, I'm not trying to rag on you. I mean, it, it, if you've got a, if you've got one, it's like this Venusus. You know, I, in some ways, I think I just got lucky. You know, I just got lucky with Vinny. I mean, he, yeah, he went through a period where he was a little bit crazy, but and then then he mellowed out. So I just sort of got lucky with that one. So you you roll the dice, and you might get. A mellow bumblebee. You might get a mellow oratus, but I think the chances are real, real slim that that's going to happen. Um, the oratus, they're these beautiful yellow and black, and, and all of a sudden the males, they go all black mostly, and they're, they're gorgeous, almost like a purple-blue-black, 
and they just turn into monsters. And they're built like they're like an armored tank. And um, I had a Pseudotrophius like that. It, his, his head was just like made for ramming. And uh, it, it, it was just a nightmare. So if that bumblebee harasses, uh, continues to harass, pull him out. Pull him out, rehome him, take him back to a shop, put him on Craigslist uh, because uh, they are notoriously vicious, just like the Aratus. Uh, it, that's been my experience. Sean, I wish you were in, in California and could take Vinny. But, you know, if, if Nolan gets him, he can breed him and maybe he'll make, uh, maybe he'll offer some fry uh, to all of us and ship and ship them. Uh, Tony Cancillary, I am planning to add one more tank at home. What's the best advice uh, you can give me when buying a used tank? Well, first of all, um, it, with some tanks, if you look at the bottom of the tank, it might have a date on it. If the date is like, I don't know, if it's over five years, you might want to consider continuing to look. If you love the tank, it's not scratched and you're getting a good deal and it's older than five years. And honestly, if it was a used tank anyway, I would suggest that you, um, that you do a reseal. A reseal is very easy. You use some, you use some blades and um, you take out the, you know, you remove the silicone, not getting between the glass. You don't get between the glass, between the sheets of glass. You don't put the blade in there. Just the outside sealant. You just do a nice right angle cut and you remove all the silicone. Give it a good cleaning, shop back and clean it and use alcohol and clean the heck out of it after you've, uh, uh, you, you've removed the silicone and then decide whether you want black or clear silicone and, and, and use, use aquarium silicone. That, that'd be my choice. You could, there are certain commercial brands that, but if you read the fine print, very often they say do not use underwater or not aquarium safe. Uh, so I would suggest using aquarium safe uh, silicone and reseal. It's not that hard. I did it twice on a 135 and uh, it's not that hard. Consider acrylic. If you can find an acrylic with no scratches or very minor scratches that you can buff out yourself, the weight difference is amazing. The, uh, the see-through of the acrylic is way better than glass. Even low lead glass, acrylic is still uh, more transparent than glass. Uh, it's, just, it's just the best when it comes to transparency. And if you can find one of these with the curved corners, on the front, uh, this is a clear for life. Gorgeous tanks. Uh, got a good deal on this one. Sold it for even a better deal to the buyer. You can't find them brand new for under a thousand. Uh, but get a hold of an acrylic if you can. Uh, if you get a glass one, do a reseal. You'll be glad you did. On the bottom, there might be a, a, a date. If it's over 10 years, I probably would keep looking. Unless it was like an amazing deal. And then consider consider a reseal. You don't want to get into having to tear it apart entirely and rebuild it, you know, clamp it and rebuild it. You don't want to get into that. So um, that's my advice. You can get some great deals on Craigslist. You got to look, keep looking. And if you're uh, adventuresome, consider a sump, get one that's already drilled and get into a sump. You will not regret it. If it's going to be under 100 gallons, uh, I would say a couple canisters and, an, and, an, and a hang on back. Sometimes people will throw in the filters if you buy the tank. So don't forget to ask, do you have some filters? Sometimes, oh yeah, I've got this here. That hang on back filter that I had running on that 60 gallon was used and thrown in with a 135 gallon that I bought used. The person just said, yeah, go ahead and take that Marine Land. It ran for two or three years and it's probably going to run for five or six years for Kevin Green who put it on the 60. The thing is just a, just runs forever. So um, uh, get a hold of some filters with it if you can. Sometimes they'll just throw them in just to get rid of them. And as was pointed out by T-Bone, fill up the tank outside for 48 hours and make sure you don't have a single leak before you take it into the house. 
Sounds like a lot of work, and very often we're anxious to get our new tanks going. But fill it up, let it sit for 48 hours, and then empty it and bring it into the house. Don't bring it into the house until you've leak checked it. You'll thank me, believe me. Yeah, wave makers. Yeah, bumblebees are not going to... Uh, L. Baker, the bumblebee isn't going to care about the wave maker. Just gives him a little bit more momentum when he wants to ram one of the other fish. <laughs> so, they're just jerks. They're jerk fish. They're, they're part of the uh, jerkochromus family. So, <laughs> along with the erratus. Thanks for that update, KG Cichlids, the 60-gallon that was moved with 60-gallon, uh, which I'll be talking about in a video that's coming up. Uh, he tore it down, drove for a few hours, set it up again, and uh, had a perfectly set up tank with 10 to 20 parts per million nitrates. No break in the cycle, solid setup. Uh, that tank, I tell you, that tank is uh, will run for you forever uh, with that setup. Yeah. And I'm going to break it down in detail uh, for all of you in that video that's coming up where I talk about my most stable setup. So watch for that. And uh, Mr. 3000, don't go, don't go. <laughs> Don't cry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love it. Thank you so much. I've got to go. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm going. I'm going because my daughter is, uh, and her husband are there. I'm hoping we get some grandchildren. I have four kids, no grandchildren. Uh, we're dying to have some grandkids. No pressure on them, uh, but I've told them. And uh, <laughs> so we want to be close to them. Um, I am leaving um, uh, two kids on the West Coast, my youngest uh, daughter and my son. Uh, both are very, very uh, capable, very able my youngest is going to spend some time with us in Nashville. We're, we're going to have a room set up for her. And my oldest son, who travels all over the place, he works with the Philadelphia Phillies, uh, is, uh, is going to be, uh, you know, we'll have a bed there for him too so he can come by and, and spend time with us. So uh, anyway, it's uh, a variety of factors. Plus, I, I, I'll tell you something. We just did an audit. My daughter has a house uh, that's going to be a, a bit, it's a bit larger than the one we're getting, but... Uh, comparable in size they run their air conditioner 24 7 we did a comparable a side-by-side -side comparison we pay in southern california four times the amount to cool a house that we would pay in uh, in nashville four times the amount uh, for the energy for the electricity uh, to register uh, my wife has a chevy cruise $270 to register it in California, $45 to register it in Tennessee. These, these things weighed heavy in our decision, heavy, heavy. So right off the bat, a $30,000 drop in annual cost of living to live in Nashville. So th I, let me tell you, that, that can buy a lot of fish. That can buy a... a <laughs> I can get a pretty, pretty big tank for that change in cost of living. So uh, that was one of the reasons, to be honest with you, cost of living as I go into retirement and uh, Social Security becomes the, my primary source of income. Uh, you know, it, it, we had to consider those kind of things. No state income tax. So, you know, the side hustle money I can make, I don't have to worry about it getting taxed by the state. And uh, anyway, those are all all factors. So um, Richard Maloney, did I tell you thank you? It looks like your message was uh, deleted. It looks like you might have said something that GP did not like. Okay. Aquador Deep, cheers. Cheers to you, my friend. Paul and Marty, thank you for those super chats. Thank you to everybody that super chatted. It really helps and is very appreciated. And for those of you that don't super chat, thank you for being here. Um, I've said that many times that uh, some of you go to my Amazon store. Some of you go to the uh, Teespring. Some of you super chat. But you know what? I appreciate you if you can't do that also and just watch the videos because that's important too. And that is supporting the channel. So very, very good. Eddie. 
I think you'd love Vinny. I think you'd love him. And thank you, Laura, for that four ninety nine. Michael Lunt, I moved a house a few years ago and sold everything. If anything, it reinvigorated my interest in the hobby, and I couldn't wait to get a new setup again. Um, Michael, I'm waiting to. F I'm, I'm starting to feel that way. You know, I still have this tank, and I'm still sort of still hanging on, but I'm starting to feel that way. The excitement of you know the search and the purchase and to getting to know the local fish community and the local shops and uh, coming up with what I'm going to do first and uh, you know I'm starting to get get that bug again you know that bug you had when you first when you first started getting into uh, into getting tanks the excitement uh, lamp filled with oil your fish are fighting yeah sometimes they fight behind me especially that uh, fire hap Fire Hap has been uh, getting onto the, um, I have a uh, Borlei Quad, a Borlei Quad who is probably hiding in one of the corners, and for some reason that Fire Hap doesn't like that Borlei Quad, I don't know why, and uh, so when the Fire Hap sells, the Borlei Quad will be able to catch his breath, and uh, you know, uh, Jay Salome, Jay Salome, I'm waiting for that dollar per gallon sale. That might be a great way to go. Um, I'm not sure how big they go. I mean, I don't know if they sell, do they sell 100? Do they sell 125s? And do they include 125s in that 100 per gallon sale? Because that would be great. Wouldn't that be great? Go pick up like, like three or four of those 125s at a dollar a gallon. I mean, that would be, man, that'd be awesome. And, and then just have these empty canvases there that you can kind of figure out what to do with and, and, uh, and play around with. Jordan LaBelle, I'm in Eastern Montana and it cost me $600 to register my 219 Suburban. Are you kidding me? Anyway, Jordan, uh, you can use my Nashville address. <laughs> no, let's not do that. Let's not. <laughs> Patrick got his first sump after seeing mine. Uh, I love sumps. They're great, and I, there is a sump in my future. H-E-P-A uh, Aquatics. I was about six years old when I started in the hobby. My mom brought home like a five gallon, I think it was a five gallon tank with a metal frame and a metal, a metal top, you know, these, these metal, I think they, they, they I think they outlawed them because people were getting electrocuted. And, uh, I think, I think I remember getting a shock and, you know, if you couldn't afford the, the, the long light, you would put like a light bulb in there and the metal lid would get like, like so hot that if you reached over the tank, you'd get a scar on your arm, you know, and. And uh, there were some neons and some rasboras in there. And uh, I, uh, I immediately did that mistake that every fish keeper does. I, I gave the tank a real good cleaning. And, of course, I killed everything. And uh, I, I probably went out and bought fish several more times uh, before I learned that every time I did a thorough cleaning, I killed everything. And uh, anyway, and there have been periods in my life where um, I didn't have tanks uh, when I was in college uh, when I had a job where I was traveling around and then I bought a tank for one of my kids and uh, then they went into other interests I took over the tank and the bug bit me hard again and so uh, so anyway I've had tanks um, it seems like I've always had pets certainly around but fish are my er, my probably my first pet was a fish and I followed shortly by a dog a cocker spaniel so um in Australia, 650 to register. I mean, you know, it, it's like, I don't know. I mean, who came up with this stuff? You know, you know, it's just another tax to register a car like that. It's just a tax. Call it registration. It's a tax. And uh, anyway, 
we have huge gas taxes here in California to help take care of the roads and stuff. So they, they, they gouge you there. And then here's another thing. It, it's, it's $4 a gallon in California. It's $2 a gallon in Tennessee. So start adding this up. Start adding this up. Ding, 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 ding. You know, you start adding this stuff up. And, and that's where my wife came up with $30,000 a year in difference. Now, keep in mind, for you to get a hold of $30,000, you've got to earn $45,000. <laughs> because after taxes, you get $30,000 to spend. So uh, anyway, it, it, it's just ridiculous. And I'm not going to get into uh, the gouging that occurs out here. I love this state. I call it uh, the paradise tax. But even paradise has gotten a little bit frayed with the increase in um, homelessness and other things that are going on out here. Anyway, it's it's a wild scene. And uh, so we fell in love with Nashville. And we went to downtown Franklin and fell in love with downtown Franklin. So um, there it is. So... Um, Uh, Shogun Warrior 74, Ben, I wish you all the best in your move and starting a new chapter in your life. Godspeed uh, from Alabama. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that very much. I'm getting all the uh, registration costs from everybody now. <laughs> Amber Dog over in uh, Oregon is paying 280 dollars uh, to register a Prius. And you know what? I have a Volt. I bought an electric car because I wanted to be able to use the, they have a lane here that you can use if it's electric. Then they took it away. They said that, no, that lane can't be used anymore by, <laughs> that was the last straw. <laughs> All right. Th KG, 30K in fish room. Uh, well, you know, my, my wife's al already allocated the 30,000 KG. <laughs> oh, God. The pet store tells me the speckled moray eel only gets two feet long and stays skinny, and a 55-gallon would be suitable, but I'm skeptical. If anyone is on the chat that knows about uh, knows about speckled moray eels, can you chime in? I, I know nothing about uh, speckled moray eels. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, John, we already have a home. We have it in, um, I think you'd call it Bellevue. It's, um, it's technically Nashville, but um, right next to Franklin is a little community called Bellevue. And uh, it's uh, just a gorgeous little community. They carved out a... Uh, uh, out of a, uh, out of the woods, they carved out six cul-de-sacs, small little cul-de-sacs, like one block each, and one road to access it in a wood in a wooded area, and that's where the home is in Bellevue, um, and it's just it's just gorgeous. I have woods all around, and 15 minutes from Nashville, seven minutes from our daughter uh, who's in Franklin, and so it's we're just very very happy with the location, and. Uh, <clears throat> So if you have any other questions, ask them now. And uh, it looks like we're running over the hour. Williamson County, Franklin has higher taxes, but is a great place. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be out. I'm technically in Davidson County. And uh, so I don't know. Maybe in Davidson I'm esca escaping some of those higher taxes, but yet I have the advantage of being right up against Franklin. So maybe I'm in best of both worlds. All I know is that I timed it from our door to our to our daughter's door and it was seven and a half minutes so that was it's like perfect for us so um at any rate let's go ahead and um uh, go ahead and and uh, for those of you that are still on thank you so much everybody for joining in thank you to my wonderful moderators you are the best uh gp and kevin and of course the wonderful candy and um thank you to my super chatters uh, if I missed you, I'm sorry, but I appreciate you super chatting. And thank you to everybody that um, has joined me on these. I will try and do one this coming Saturday, no promises. Uh, depends on what's going on. We're going to be doing a big yard sale and uh, to get rid of a bunch of stuff and uh, before we leave. And we're selling appliances and refrigerators and all kinds of stuff. And uh, so be sure, be sure to... Uh, let me do this little wrap-up for you here. 
be sure to uh, come on over to Instagram and follow on Instagram. You'll get some behind the scenes looks at what's going on. Maybe a few little vlog posts on the move and the drive to Nashville. Uh, be sure to hit that uh, bell and sub if you haven't already. And uh, be sure to uh, come by the uh, the Ben O'Cyclid Facebook page, Ben O'Cyclid. And uh, we have a very friendly Facebook group there. If you try and get into the Facebook group, please be sure to answer all three questions. Um, there's like three or four questions. If you don't answer them, the moderators don't let you in. So please be sure to answer the questions so that we don't have to decline you coming in. That's how we keep the bots and the trolls out, and we keep it very, very friendly. So beginners can come in and answer a question, and we have advanced people in there. We have saltwater people. We have, uh, you know, live bears, guppies, uh, cichlid people. All types of people are in there. And uh, so come join the Ben O. Cichlid Facebook group. And uh, every month we do a contest for the banner, and the winner gets a gift certificate from uh, our friends over at Super Cichlids in Delaware. They have a shop up there, a family-owned shop, and they get a gift certificate where they can get food and things like that from Super Cichlids. So uh, come on by and check out the channel. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much, everybody. You are the best. You rock. Don't forget that ever.